Okay, E3D High Flow Obsidian Hot End for Bamboo Lab X1P1 series, assembled version. Um, I'm going to get through all this info as quickly as I can. I've got some good info, good test results for you, some prints to show off. Um, I uh, am still not quite up to uh, editing my videos, so this is going to be a hot one take, this old Tony Hands video, so be prepared. Uh, but I've got some good info, try to keep the video short. Here we go. So uh, this is not this, because this is the old hot end out of my printer. This is not the new hot end. Look how sad and tired that old hot end is. It's, it's, it's bad. There was all kinds of crap all over the fan. All right. Uh, this came from, the, the new hot end came from Philistrator. Uh, it was $110. You can also get the raw uh, heat sink and hot end for $80. So it's an extra $30 for the privilege of having the heater thermistor pre-installed sock on it and the fan on it so they're getting those uh, parts from bamboo lab and they're putting it together selling it to you for a premium thirty dollar premium i'd probably do it again uh, with this pre-assembled this becomes like a two minute install process it is so so easy it's so great um, i love to see it uh, so to install this in your p1p you remove the cover off the tool heads just held on magnetically just just pull it off gently there's a cable so pull it off, leave it out of the way, pull these two connectors off, pull the two screws out. There's two screws here that hold it in, pull the screws completely out, and then drop the hot end out of the printer. Um, Bamboo Labs uh, printers uh, retract the filament out when the print is done, so there won't be any filament hanging out. It's real easy. When you take your new one, jam it in there, put the two screws in, tighten the screws, put your two plugs in, and then put the cover on the hot end so easy it's so nice um so again the new one's already in the printer sorry don't have one to show you it looks just like this there's no really no visual difference uh the uh of course there's uh you know a high flow uh, geometry in here and there's the obsidian coating on it so it should be you know it should have all the bells and whistles right all right so uh the printer's ready to go as soon as you put that in there's no pid changes no firmware changes luckily because bamboo labs isn't going to let you do that but there's none needed so it's ready to go as soon as you put it in to uh take advantage of the speed or the 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 benefits out of this guy what you're going to need to do is go into your slicer either bamboo studio or oracle slicer and you're going to need to um you'll need to up the flow rate that's in the filament profile so it's the first half on the left go all the way down there's a flow rate there I was super conservative on mine and set it to 30 millimeters cubed. I know that's not exciting. This hot, the new hot end will definitely do that, no problem. But that's over twice what most of the filament profiles you'll see are. Uh, on um, Polymaker Polylite PLA, the filament profile was either 12 or 15, and the Polymaker um, Polyterra, mine was already 22. It was already pretty high. That's probably a little too high, but. That's what it was set for. But I set this for 30 on the new hot end. You could do 30, 35. I would say 35 to 40 is probably going to be a good place to be uh, and still be able to flow for big prints. Uh, if you do testing on your flow rate, just remember that the smaller the print, the more likely that you're not testing the true flow rate. Flow rate. You've got to do big parts. And I've got a big part to show you here in just a second. I did that test. Um, so you need to change the flow rate of this, the your film profile, bump it up. I bump mine up to 30. And then you need to up your motion, your, uh, your, um, your extrusion speed. So that's in the general profile on the lower left. Uh, go to the speed tab and you'll find various millimeters per second for your speeds. Um, I upped all mine to either the machine limit. So on a P1P, it's 500 millimeters a second is a machine limit. Uh, on uh, the outer perimeters and the tops, I upped it to 350. Really could have just put those at the machine limits too. Uh, the way it works out is that the printer uh, is still limited by, it's limited by a combination of the speed and flow rate, mostly the flow rate. So uh, with those settings, 30 millimeters a second and upping to the machine max speed, uh, I am doing between 350 and 375 millimeters a second movement speed on average with the new hot end. 
uh, I also up the first layer to 100 just because I wanted to. I didn't do any Excel changes, no other performance changes. I just up the flow rate and up the movement speed to support a higher flow rate. That's it. Uh, so I did some testing. Uh, here are some benchies, of course. Uh, one with the old hot end, one with the new. I really couldn't tell you which one's which. They both look the same. Uh, one was like three hour print. The other one was like two and a half hours. Uh, this is a poly, Polymaker uh, Polyterra Peanut. And you'll see why I use this color in a minute. Um, this was already at a pretty high speed rating, which I was kind of surprised about. It had 22 millimeters a second cubed uh, flow rate in the filament profile. So this was faster, but not obscenely faster. Saved me a little bit of time, saved me about 20, 30 minutes. All right, so there's those. Uh, the next thing I did was I just finished the project I had going. Uh, I'm not a hardware tester primarily, so, uh, you know, I had other things going. So I was finishing these really, really cool gingerbread train sets. Um, the boiler section here and here, one was printed on the new hot end, one was printed on the old hot end. These were AMS prints, so there were color changings happening. Uh, all that went great. Um, I, I didn't have a single bit of trouble. Um, the, uh, the windows were printed on the new hot end. The, the pet G windows came out really, really good. Um, these panels, one was printed on the old hot end, one was on the new. So really, you know, came out great. Uh, nothing exciting to say about those. Um, so I knew I needed to put on some higher flow. Uh, I needed to put on a large part to really test sustained flow rate. Uh, I needed to do that. So, of course, I did the bigger benchy. Here's the bigger benchy. The bigger benchy is uh, it's a 500% benchy. The only uh, special settings I did for the benchy was I turned off the brim and wanted to do a brim. And I did reduce the infill from 15 to 10%, just so I didn't waste too much film. All right, so this guy is a max size benchy. It's a 254 millimeters X and Y placed a diagonally on the plate. So this is as big as you can put, big as you can do. Um, it's 462 grams. It took eight hours and 20 minutes to print. It was, I, it's insane. And, and it looks great, right? I mean, there's, I, mean, I don't know really what to show you. It looks fine, right? It's, it's fine. Uh, this is, this filament is uh, Elegoo Black PLA. Nothing special about it. It's okay. I uh, probably could use a little bit of uh, tuning. There's a the, the bow line is here, right? And that's uh, that's that's the, the path around the, the deck, but that's also um, tuning your uh, flow rate a little bit too. It's bulging out a little. So yeah, anyway, uh, but this stuff's $11 a roll, so I didn't feel bad burning through half a roll to do this test. So uh, 462 grams. This took eight hours and 20 minutes to print. That works out to 13 millimeters cubed average flow over the whole print. That includes travels, that includes retractions, that includes all that time spent. It averaged 13 millimeters cubed for the whole print. This works out to a daily use, a daily consumption rate of uh, one and a third kilograms a day. Remember back in the day when people would brag about doing a kilogram a day? They had some beast of a printer with some big fat nozzle on it. And they're like, I can burn through a kilogram a day. Well, now you can do that on a Bamboo Labs printer. It's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Kilogram and a third a day. You run yourself broke on filament pretty fast. Um, okay, so I think that's the only, that's all the stats I wanted to show on this. Uh, this was, again, this was 350 to 375 millimeters. Q, uh, millimeters squared uh, movement speed to, to do this. So the printer ran fast for eight hours. Um, I did add speed benchy rules on top of this and did the layer height and everything. The speed benchy turned off all the extra settings, did the bare minimum. If, if you wanted to abuse your printer for this period of time, I'm not going to, but if you wanted to, you could produce this benchy in roughly the same quality in five hours. You could do a half a kilogram, almost a half a kilogram in five hours. It's insane. I mean, that works out to four kilograms a day, right? If you if you turned off all your extras and then just pushed everything to the max, you could run four kilograms a day. 
that's it's wild. Uh, all right. So uh, I thought, well, I've already done all this testing, right? I've done all the things. I should do an actual speed benchy, right? So this is an actual, uh, an actual, you can tell, you can tell it's a benchy shaped object, right? It's an actual speed benchy. But with all those settings and, and only profile tweaks, I didn't do any, I've seen some people do funny things with uh, infill masking and uh, support masking and doing special things with areas, but I just dropped this object on the plate and I did all of the speed benchy setting so it's a 0.25 and 0.5 width and turned off all the retractions and the uh turned off all the extras and just just uh you know max everything i stayed to the machine limit which is 500 and i stayed to the published excels which is 20k all right so it's just as fast as the machine would go no extras uh and i unlocked all the flow i set the flow to like 100 millimeters cubed so it ran at the machine limits. Uh, it ran about, uh, I want to say 45 millimeters cubed was the average flow that it ran. The heater did keep up barely. The heater sagged a little bit as I was printing this. This is a nine minute and 20 second benchy. Nine minutes and 20 seconds. And other than the chimney, right? Cause I, I turned off all the minimum uh, layer times for cooling. I mean, other than the chimney and a little bit of the bow, right? The, the bow didn't cool that well. But, I mean, that's incredible. Nine minutes and 20 seconds, all right? So, back to this guy. Well, not this guy, but the one that's in the printer. Absolutely. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, it's a premium, right? You're paying a premium. They're getting you. They're getting you on the cost. Uh, but is it worth it? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. So I did a really conservative uh, increase and I got about 40, 50% in, uh, uh, back in print time. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing 50, 50% more material in the same amount of time. So uh, I think they advertise up to 60% improvement. I think up to 60% is what they advertise. And absolutely, I can see that absolutely. Again, I was super conservative, right? So, you know, speed benchy aside, I mean, this is, you know, this is what the, the big guy looks like. It's, it's you know, it's legit. So, um, yeah, absolutely recommend it. So, hope you enjoyed. See ya.